ladies got this. My shot. Got this. If I get the card, I prepare for this day. Six. One time. Breathe. You never know when your time is going to come. To rise above the rest. To seize the opportunity. To be crowned a champion. Is it time for your story to be told? The World Poker Tour. Welcome to the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino here in Hollywood, Florida. For the final table of the World Poker Tour Lucky Hearts Poker Open, I'm Scott Baumstein, joined by former WPT Player of the Year, Faraz Jaka. What's up, guys? Bringing you the action. We got exciting final table today. All are guaranteed about $100,000. The winner guaranteed just shy of $500,000. Finally gets a real hand here after opening the last two in a row. That's interesting. He made it 150 the last couple of hands for his open. Now he has a big hand. He took a little while and made it 175. Yep. Yeah, John likes to play mind games. Which I'm, I'm definitely a fan of. If anyone knows my game, you know, people a lot of times have kind of their standard sizings they go with. So you don't give off reads, don't give off tails. But the way I look at it is, you know, by messing with your sizing and switching it up you're you know have an opportunity to kind of deceive people and let them think they have reads um just a matter of if you're confident in being able to kind of out manipulate your opponents right it cuts both ways it's the same as you know wearing sunglasses and a hoodie it's okay no one could read you but now you don't have the opportunity to do reverse psychology and get fake tails Peter's committing a lot of his stack now in the big blind here. That'll do it. And he should be getting a double here. Let's see if uh, John's going to bet here now. Peter only has slightly more than the size of the pot. He has 650 back and there's 475 in the pot. <coughs> should be, be able to Bet yeah. the turn and shove the river on most runouts here. Yeah. Check. Another check. Oh. It's time to start getting yeah. betting for value, and you can't be concerned that you're beat. If you're yeah. beat, you're beat here at this exactly. point when you only have uh, not much more than the size of the pot. you got to go with it yeah. when you flop top pair. I, I want to see a jam here. Yep, there all sorts of draws out there. There's two Camp. flush draws. There's straight yeah. draws. You could be representing one of those. Queen, queen, queen's the perfect candidate yeah. to you can't play to have too to careful call here. You. This is your chance to double. Boom, okay. good shove. And and he's gonna get looked up here instantly. That Peter doubles up to about 1.8 million, twice what he started with at the final table.
Ten seconds. Call. Matt Wilson. Make the call on the fifth line. Andy Harris will take the call. Peace of diamonds, four hearts, king of hearts. Scott Drobe says, enjoying the covers, gentlemen. Now that I watch Brian's opening range, I feel a little better about 3-bet jamming 23 big blinds with Ace Jack. Call. I'm assuming Scott must have uh, busted or played a big pop versus Brian earlier in this tournament. It is definitely cool to, uh, you know, play with some folks on day two, day three, then throw up the final table stream and see some of the players you're playing against and see their whole cards. So that's one really cool thing about playing these, uh, you know, televised events and live stream events that you can go and check that out after the game's finished. Brian Seabet, the flop, when Natty flop top pair with, with zero equity, has really zero equity in the turn. Uh, this would be quite quite the barrel if he if he puts in another bet here with he's really nothing. It. He's got no pair, no draw, eight high. Uh, and he's drawing stone dead to Nadia's top pair. And I mean, it's still a tough spot for her. I, I think she's There's way too strong here. She can't. She has one of her strongest hands, meaning just ace-x, because uh, she doesn't have you know yeah. the really strong hands. You know, your aces, your kings, your ace, king, You know, when, when you look at those. Th theoretically, you're absolutely right, but being in the situation with the amount of money on the line and just knowing that Brian might put epic pressure on you, the heart might come, the dime might come. This is one of those I'll spots. She doesn't fold. This is one oh of those wow. spots that's really hard. So, like the bet. He did bet a sizing that he ma he surely made Nadia know that she was going to be put all in the river one way or the other. And that's why some of these turn barrels can be so powerful. I I'd, I'd like it a lot better if Brian had a heart and a diamond in his hand, or at least one. Um, that way, you know, he can continue. So many different looks for John. First was the jacket, now the then the uh, V-neck, and now the V-neck with the hat. Scott Somerville likes to hear strategies. We'll make sure we keep throwing some of those in, Scott. Ten seconds. John raising under the gun with pocket nines. He's going on his bigger sizing again. Last time he went bigger sizing, he was also under the gun, so his sizing tell could just be in relation to his position at the table. Not only his hands, he had queens mm -hmm. when he did it last time, also a strong hand, but he was under the gun. And who's in the big blind this hand? Sometimes people Peter. will vary it based on that. Peter's a short stack. Which I'd be more inclined to bet smaller mm -hmm. against the short stacks. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But I do agree about my, I do change my, the biggest factor in my sizings uh, have to do with, with who's in the big blind. Mm -hmm. Not not the hand itself. I don't mm -hmm. vary it based on the hand, but I do vary it based on uh, who's who's going to be defending the big blind. Mm -hmm. I think this, this defend here is a little wide, even with the ace uh, from Peter. It, it, it was been an under the gun open, almost a full 3x, and he only ha started the hand with 10 big blinds. Yeah. Now he's down to 7. He's going to have to check full. He's going to have to so check full. Just like this flop. He thinks he might even have the best hand here, but it's going to be pff, impossible for him to continue. I think he's going to either. I mean, he's going to. Any bet he does is going to be a commit, so he's either just going to go all in himself or bet half the pot and. I like that bet a lot without going all in. Bet really small. Keep him in, in with some hands. Maybe maybe keep him in with some ace-high hands like he has. I don't think he will, but I like this bet versus just going all in. If he goes all in, he just takes it down all the time um, and really gets all the hands that he can crush out of it. 
I bet 175 he might get some gut shots to, to jam it on him. Yeah, you can't really continue here without at least the Ace of Clubs in your hand. You know, if he instead had Ace-4 or Ace-5... And to be fair, John be hasn't been doing anything too crazy. Yeah, Ace-4, Ace-5, like Scott's saying, makes sense. The hand you can jam here. And John hasn't been going too crazy today. Ten seconds. Uh, he's using two time banks. I mean, he, I think he's going to end up letting this go. He's he's up against an under-the-gun raiser. Um, I mean, he, he I, I have a feeling he's sitting there just thinking, you know... John's crazy, wow. he's opening king high, queen high, queen six. That's very light. Yeah, I don't like that play. I, I feel like he'd let John get into his head, just, you know, maybe the way John's been playing previous days. I mean, at least the ace of clubs in your hand, you know, helps a little bit. Here, you just have nothing. Even the seven of clubs would help. <laughs> A little bit of sweat here. Turn card. A four or an ace? Well, Peter's going to be our sixth place finisher. Okay, Peter. That said, uh, I could definitely understand it's probably frustrating for him as the short stack, especially with John and Brian opening so much that you get pretty tempted there. I mean, that said, it's not like I'm never track with the king of my hand, but at least I'm going to have, you know, some back doors then. 375. Raise a small to big to 3.75x with 10-4 off. Thinking Nadim is only going to continue with his really strong hand, some of which he's just going to shove in himself for this sizing. But Nadim's putting in a little bit of a spot here with Queen 8 suited. He's got a better than average hand. He's in position, but it's a big raise in front of him. What do you do here with Queen 8 suited? I think we're going to see a flat. He's how many yep. bigs? Call. 34 bigs. We're yeah. seeing 3.75x, and he does call and yeah. see a flat. Or wh wh why were you thinking he wouldn't call? Oh, it's just it was just pretty big, and it's a marginal hand. But yeah, I mean, you're connected, you're suited, you got high cards. You know, Brian's playing extremely aggressive, easily dominating some of his opens. See, Brian does have some backdoor equity here. He's got backdoor straight and flush draws, yeah. and he is going to use that only one over card on the board to his 10. He is going to see bet here. The Dean's not going anywhere with his flush yeah, draw. It's going to be interesting if the turn is an 8 or a jack or something. Or diamond. That gives yeah, something that gives. So with the diamond, it's still pretty hard. I I feel like he's gonna need a diamond and a gut shot to continue. I mean, four diamonds, not a very strong blocker. <laughs> well, that could be an interesting card. Yeah. He uh, Brian gutter. now turns a double gutter, wow. and Nadine picks up a gut shot to go along with his wow. flush draw. It's going to be really tempting for him to continue. I, I don't blame him here. I do think he is going to continue here. There's no way yeah. he's just going to check fold this hand once he picks up a double gutter when he had nothing on the flop. Yeah. This is this is good aggression from Brian, assuming he's going to bet. Th these are the kind of spots I think he needs to be saving it for. 700. This oh. is a good spot to just jam. If you're Nadim, you, you picked up straight draw, flush draw. Brian seems to be betting too many spots. If you don't improve, you're going to have to fold in the river. Um, you know. But I, I don't. He's not going to fold, so he can either call. He can go all in. He can't raise an amount that isn't all in. Ten seconds. Yep, he's thinking about it. He's thinking about what to do between those two options. Is that seven hundred sure. into into one and a half? Bet half pot. Two point seven. And he only has two million over the bet. Feels like he's about to jam. <laughs> I think he is going to jam. Ten seconds. He's got a lot of equity, even if he is getting called, and Brian seems to be getting out of line. Wow, this is gonna give. Our, I want to see if Brian goes for it here. If it's a brick here on the river. Mm. Oh wow! 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 Brian goes runner, runner straight. 
and Nadim rivers some equity. He rivers second pair, but there is four line to the straight on the board. And what size is he going to go here? I think he's just going to put it in. It's only two. He only has two million behind. There's two point eight million in the flop. I think Brian's only move here is to go. This all is in. a tough call from Nadim. I mean, what do you beat now? You're blocking this diamond draw. One, one. one of them. You're also blocking like six eight. I mean, the hands you would have been happy with were, you know, him barreling ace ten and. I I I really like your your suggestion as a jam on the turn. I'm surprised Brian doesn't go bigger and just go all in on the river and make it really polar. I, I think he might just guy. feel like he does. He's not. It's so hard to call off without a straight here. I kind of don't blame his sizing. I mean, it's just it's so scary to hero call off. You know, in a spot like this. And it might very well work out for him because I don't think he was calling all I in. He might call this 1.1 billion. I I think if I'm playing someone like John, like um, sorry, like John, who we know is capable of hero calling, um, I'm I'm much more open to going bigger, or you know, maybe another reg who's you know as established as Brian. Um, I wouldn't mind shoving versus that type of player, but for someone who hasn't been in this spot all that often, it's just unclear if he's willing to hero his life off here without a straight. What do you think he's gonna do? I think he's going to call. I think he's pretty tempted. I think Brian's been pushing like crazy. I think he's going to call too. Yeah. The problem is, it's do I like the call? I mean, I don't know. You don't really beat. <laughs> I can't really think of what he beats. Yeah, I, I don't think I call. You just don't beat anything. And you have the diamonds in your hand. And he's kicking himself. He's thinking I should have shoved the turn. That's a pretty dirty run out for for him. Yeah. Um, so I'm surprised that Brian wants to take, um, you know, these higher variance routes when he's when when putting pressure on his opponent's post flop is working very well. But putting pressure on his opponent's pre flop is also working well, and it's not going to work here. And Nadim is going to look him up with with ace king. Well, that's the beauty of a hand like 10 jack. It plays completely fine against ace king. It plays completely fine. Against better than nines, better than sevens. two to one. Yep. It's almost only a three to two dog here. How many chips was this? Two oh, it's only 18 big blinds. Perfectly reasonable here. Yep. This is not out of line at all. From small to big. And he outflops him just like that. Nadim's going to need an ace or a king to stay alive here. What reasonable person would say no? Seven of clubs. Game the team. And with that, Nadim is our fifth place finisher. Yeah, Nadia's been playing a lot of great hands. That one I did not like. Happens, happens to the best of us. Happened to me yesterday. Sometimes you just make a brain fart. Well, since, since you're not going to mention it, yesterday, Faraz chopped the $5,000 buy-in tournament, the last the last big tournament of the of the series here, yep. for about, what, about $100,000? Uh, yeah, about 90k, 89000 That was a one-day tournament. Nice yep. little day. $5,000 buy-in. 18 buy-ins in a day. Paid. Yeah, we had Joe McKean, former WSB champ, was there. He got third place. Wow, so Nadia just, comp look at this hand here. So Nadia just completed from the small blind with ace-10 offsuit, and then John just went all in for only 21 big blinds with ace-king. This is a call. She's yeah. now, she's so strong here. She yeah. completed from the small blind. John's going to be doing this with weaker aces than ace-king, obviously weaker aces than, than her ace-10. Wow. Wow. And I, if I chose th to play the hand that way, I mean, he not could only have king queen, he could have king queen. Not only would I have called had I limped and he shoved me for twenty one big blinds, I would have called if I raised and he re raised me for yep. twenty one big blinds. Blind versus blind yep. for twenty one big blinds effective with ace ten offsuit. It is very unlikely <laughs> that you, that you're beat there. The hand is very Especially very strong hand. in that spot. Mm -hmm. You're four handed. You're blind versus blind. Yeah. You're only twenty one big blinds effective. Yeah, I ace ten is there. is a. Uh, you know, she 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 could have shoved herself. She could have raised and then called off. What she could have completed and then called off. But I'm trying I to see what the other shortest stack is. It's uh, 
it's Chan Racy, and uh, we'll see his stack in a minute there. I'm trying to see what she was. Oh, she's got Ace 10 here. Again. I think she is the shortest stack. Yeah, I mean, if you're the shortest stack, that's even more reason to call there. She's got 20 big blinds effective and Ace 10 again. I think her hand is strong enough now to min raise and then call all in if if she's jammed yeah. on. You know, I, I have a feeling on the last hand she was thinking she was gonna. It could happen again yeah. here with John and his Ace Eight yeah. offsuit. Yep. I I have a feeling on the last hand she was. And he does it, John. I think. Oh no, I thought he said all in. He's definitely I, thinking about. I it. will not be with. W he has the short stack behind him and John races, yeah. so he's not worried about him. There's I think he's gonna go all in. What do you think of the shove? I think his shove is fine, yeah. especially if Nadia's overfolding, which mm -hmm. she is. Uh, again, she's got no, she's another not call. She's do it again. There's no way she folds this. You know, sometimes, she, you know, we could look at this two ways. Well, she made the right fold last time. This would be the wrong. But, like, I think in both of these spots, these were calls. Um, and she folds wow. again. Wow. I don't like, like this. Like, Nadia, you're not going to find a lot of much stronger hands yeah. in these spots, forehanded yep. this shallow. Um as you can see, yes, sometimes he will show up with ace-king, but he's also going to show up with ace-eight. If you're not willing to call ace-queen, what are you going to be playing to maximize your profits? I, we definitely both agreed that the ace-queen should have been a call, so she is playing a little too tight there. Oh, I think the, the point we're making is that, you know, there's small mistakes and there's large mistakes, and, you know, overfolding ace-queen there is a smaller mistake than calling too wide with, you know, maybe ace-9 or something. And maybe hello. Ace we have Ooh. the light open from John in the cutoff, a 6-4 offsuit. The 3-bet from... Uh, oh, wow, excuse me, not the 3-bet. Brian just calls with ace-king, gets Nadia now to shove with ace-queen, and she's going to find out the bad news. But quite frankly, even if Brian had 3-bet here, her four bet jamming here would have been reasonable. I think she's gonna run good here. I think she's gonna suck out. It's fifty fifty. Either she does or she doesn't, right? <laughs> I don't know why, I just feel it. This went exactly how Brian wrote it up. I'm surprised we saw, uh, even though they are very deep, but I am surprised we saw a call from Brian of the small blind with Ace King. So he's just fake tanking over here, huh? Talk about a perfect spot for Brian. Mm -hmm. He's just never calling with Ace King out of the small blind there. Virtually never. He does it just like this is that rare time that he does. Finds Nadia in the big blind with Ace Queen just, and gets her to shove. I'm guessing he just didn't want to play a big pot right. out of position, and John's not putting too much pressure. Right. And he's and he can play the hand disguised. Yeah. It's balanced. Probably it's Ace King suited. He'd be more likely to three bet. No help for Nadia. She's going to need a queen. Running deuce four to chop. Now she needs a queen that isn't a diamond. It's only getting worse for her. She's got two outs. Or she's going to be out in fourth. GG, Nadia. I was wrong. She didn't get there. That's why I'm not in the tournament. Not on my game. It's uh, Nadia in fourth place for 172,000. Raise the three. Yeah, it looks like John's following suit with the bigger opening size as well. I like that he didn't hesitate with the 8 9 suited. He realizes he doesn't have much fold equity at this side point. <laughs> well, I guess, yeah, I, I guess he, yeah. He happens I, to have him crush, too, yeah, which is the crazy part. Yeah. But I, I would have waited. I, you know, you have no fold equity. Yeah, sorry. He, yeah, he, has, he has almost, he has, what, eight, nine big blinds? Yeah. Like so he could he still, no okay. Yeah, he has plenty of fold equity, so. No, he 
There's no full equity over the open. No, no, no. I, 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 I meant, I meant he, he should wait right. to just shove the button. Right. Following hand, he's going to have the button, and yeah. he will have I, full I would equity. rather just shove, like, king high on the button than this hand, because it's your nine high is not It happened to work out for him that he yeah, found yeah. a hand that he could crush, which is yeah. very rare to happen. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I, I, I don't like this. I don't like this. But I would have folded here with 9-8 suited. I, I would go here with 8-9 suited if I had maybe, like, I don't know. If it folded or five to big, you. Or, yeah, or if, if you had, like, four or five big blinds or something like that. This is going to end in a chop some some 40, 30 percent of the time. I'll take a chop. Yeah, the thing that sucks with 8-9 is he could just be opening queen 5 and now you're behind. This is going to be a chop now. Unless a 8 or a 6 rolls off. So anytime I lose, you know, some huge pots and I'm down to 40 big blinds, I just try to remind myself that, you know, you know, just pretend you just doubled up and you're at this 50 big blind stack and you wouldn't feel, you wouldn't feel the way you do. We're going to have an all in and a call here. There we go. Trying to see where we're out in front, top pair ace versus middle pair. If you can fade a queen or a jack, it's gonna have three million chips and be right back in this. Now only a queen. He's got to fade. Bad turn card for the short stack. Now with two doubles. Oh, sorry, bad, bad turn card for John. And I. And with that, he's got 2.7 million at 150,000. 18 big blinds. Oh, well, that's the first one. Denies the man his moment. His moment to feel like James Bond playing Monte Carlo with the plaques. Yep, like that yeah, shove. You, you gotta be careful opening some of these six four type hands. Yeah, I think that's you know, a mistake opening that wide. You're giving him because he has a twenty big blind stack in the small blind. Who's gonna shove on him when he wakes up with yeah. you know some reasonable hands? And you got Brian in the big blind. He's just gonna defend everything to these yep. opens. Yeah, there's not. Yeah, there's. He's yeah. got to realize that. I think Brian's got a clear fold here with king queen off to an open and then 20 a big twenty big blind shove oh behind him, that, plus the original open behind, behind him. Think so? Yeah, I think it's pretty clear. Twenty bigs. Oh, what happened was John has now folded out of turn. Oh. So now he knows that oh. there's a fold behind him out of turn. Oh, that really does change things. Now I still think it's a fold. I don't know. I mean, he's going to be shoving king ten, king jack here, right? And kiss, you know, he's going to shove king, king jack, six maybe king, king ten suited. suited. I don't think he's shoving king six. Jack queen. But king he did, six he did just shove eight nine eight, eight nine suited, so maybe he is. That was with no fold equity. I, I I think this is a call for Brian, knowing that the guy's folding behind you. So it's fine. It's fine. If I call. I think you got a call if you're Brian here. Like I don't think this was intentional for by sure, John, sure. but it is a huge advantage for John if it does induce Brian to call here. Yeah. yeah. And he's jo John Racy. John Racy is understandably very upset at this. I think there probably should be a penalty involved here. He does. Sean Ray at least does have the best hand. He's a three to two favorite with dead money in there. It's not a terrible. It's not a terrible spot for him. Yeah. Uh, well, that this actually caused Brian to make call the worst hand. And if he 
can fade a king or a queen, he's going to get a double because of it. I mean, yeah, that's, I mean, he could come back and win this entire thing because of that mistake. Now a jack, king, queen. Wow, and he gets the double. It works out for him. Look at the, that smile on his face. This reminds me of a hand uh, from this summer in uh, one of the high rollers of the World Series with Sam Soverell. Do you remember this? Where he yeah. folded out yep, a turn yep, and yep. it caused a... Yep. Uh, there was a question of whether he did it yeah. intentionally or not. Um, a very similar spot. It was a fold out of yeah. turn, which induced another player to call, which yeah. benefited the player who, mm -hmm. who made the mistake and folded. It's like a action. It's like a huge so equity spot. It's, like it's, it's massive. It's like it's massive. massive. So, Jake, it is a one orb penalty. And he does get the one orb penalty. I think that's the correct thing to do here. There was no penalty given this summer mm -hmm. when it happened. Um, and I think we have a, have a correct yeah. ruling a really by, uh, by Jason, yeah, the tournament director. Us, like, yeah. regardless of the result. I win and you lose. Yeah. I wonder what Brian's going to do with, you know, ace queen jack. nine. He's probably ace jack. He's probably going to fold. What if oh, ace jack? He's going to fold. But yeah. what if he has just a nine? What if he has? What if he has eight nine or oh. queen nine or king nine? Oh, that second, was second pair. pair. Yeah. I, I think he might have just checked that back. I mean, he's got an over card. He's protected an over cards. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind just seeing a check back with queen with nine and an over card. That's gonna that's gonna cost John Racy dearly. He was on, he was an upward trajectory, but that that's gonna cost him a lot of his stack, over a quarter of his stack. That hand, two mi I think he lost two out of six point two million. Okay. That hand. Ten seconds. Do you think Brian could call there with a hand like Ace Jack suited backdoor flush draw? I I don't think they were deep enough for him to call. I think it was a shove up old spot. It almost makes the check raise a little better if they're deeper. Because you almost kind of want him to be able to call with a hand like that so you could jam him off it on the turn when you right. turn a flush draw or straight wow. so this, this card is going to mean uh, John's going to win some chips here. His flop he was... Uh, John, it was uh, Brian completed in the small blind and John raised from the big blind pre-flop. And the flop check through. Let's... Brian and John both catch their top pair on the turn. Brian's not going anywhere. It's not raising. He's just going to call here. Brian's been really patient about checking these spots, which has worked out luckily for him because he's out kicked. And on most but rivers, it's going to go, yep, check, bet, call. And he can go big here. Yeah. Ace queen is so strong on this board once that deuce pairs. Although for John, it's probably going to appear like he's just targeting a nine here. 1.9. Snap goes 1.9. Pot size bet. Didn't even think about it. Like we discussed before, all of his snap bets have been have have yet to be a bluff. Any of wow. his snap bets. Every time he's done the. But yeah. I don't blame Brian yeah. for calling. His hands Can't just too folding. strong. His hands too strong to fold the top pair there. Yeah. Maybe you want to fold some nines, but not your queens. Yeah. Yeah, I think you could. Go, Jay! There we go, baby. We're just going to take him off his game a little bit, but taking your time to think things through a little, it's never the worst thing. Ten seconds. All in. Here we go, right back at it. I think that's a little light with Ace Two Soft. It was for 17, 17 16 bigs. big lines. Like, well, you found him with 10 high, but you're only you're flipping. He's, he's significantly short, though, right? He's, no, he's got 16 yeah. big lines. I mean, relative to the other players. Yeah, but I, don't, I, I just don't feel like Ace Deuce plays well enough. You're either, yeah. you're either flipping like he is, or you crushed. I think it's pretty close. I mean, if there is any other short stacks, I 100% agree. That said, I'm not 100% I'm not confident. Sean did it. One hand, one hand, one time. 
Heads up. Just like that. Sits out, comes back in, takes his chips. They are like getting the job. Whoa! Oh. Got a little. He <laughs> <laughs> pop much? right back up, <laughs> right back up. That was a good recovery. Yeah. Reminds me of when I was a uh, college at U of I in snow for the first time. Fall and slip on the ice and jump right back up. Back up. No, no, no one saw that, right? Right. No. We, we, we didn't get that one. <laughs> it was unexpected. He rubbed that one off like nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. And oh, man. And now he's got a cooler right after. Wow. Well, these are the guys we wanted to see heads up. Definitely the most action. Oh, wow. This, this, is, interesting. this is going to be for sure a C bet and for sure a tech raise. I mean, yep. based on these positions, it's such an action flop. And Brian has seemed to go on the bigger side. And I wonder if John saw the 4-5 check raise on a very similar board not too long ago, if he has anyone telling him the hands. He's not going anywhere. You can't go anywhere here with the Ds. Wow. I mean, you got it. What do you do here for Brian? Click it back? Are he... Brian is out of position, uh, and if he just calls, it looks like he has a six. Exactly. Here. If you just call, it looks like you have a six. So I think he's going to click it back, yeah. You know, look, calling looks stronger than raising in this spot. Yeah, you got to click it back here. I, I mean, he's got to be asking himself, could I be up against so a six, though? Like, I mean, if he's got it, he's got it. <laughs> I mean, if he feels like he has a big edge, but... But if he's up against A6, he's going to get it all yeah. in the river anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's true. You're just not going to get away here, so. Or even if it's not all, most of it. It's um, going to be. He's just as likely to have him for weaker six than a stronger big, six. Yeah. I mean, just like he can have A6, he Give can have 9-6 or 8-6. It's going to be five in the pot. Yeah, they're going to get it in anyways. I think you got to go with the click here. Yep, I like that. 3.3, he does go for the click. And that should be the end of the hand. Oh, snap call. Say, I don't, I don't think Whoa, he doesn't even think he doesn't even think about it. I I I didn't expect him to fall either. It's just John's not the type of guy to I mean he's got the two but too. But even he's if you want to call, take your time. Think about calling. Make it look like you might not it might like you might have a six. Well, I mean it's kinda intimidating him. He's trying to intimidate him. I'd be I'm trying to think if you're Brian here if you ever want to well not on that card. Let me say, I'd be tempted to do some checking on a lot of turns. Uh, sort of a good card for for John in the sense that five now really all of his check races sort of now beat him. Hands like three four four five three five now have gotten there, and your queen two is no good. One point six. Small bet, right? I like it. Yep, one point six into seven million. I, li I like that sizing. You're just keeping in a lot of stuff. And you're giving yourself a cheap <coughs> price, you know, if you have, ma you know, maybe he has 5x, maybe he has a flush draw, maybe he has 7, 8, and he gets to kind of see that river nice and cheap now. Right. We're going to have a... I think we're going to see a call here, and then a jam on the river, and then John's going to fold. I think we're, we're going to have a new chip leader here at the end of this hand. Just like that first hand of heads-up play, Brian is going to punish John here and take the chip lead. Regardless of whether he folds here or not, I think Brian will have the chip lead. I think he's going to fold. Yep, he's folding. saying he said the time first but it doesn't matter if the, if the if your time button rings after 30 seconds they'll automatically take one of your time chips whether or not you throw the chip out Three seconds, 
And he does make the right fold in the turn. But they're now about neck and neck. I think Brian now will have a slight edge in chips, but they're virtually, virtually even after one hand. See? Said he feels like James Bond with the plaques. Exactly. And so, and so the blinds are still 75 and 150. We took a, we took a break mid-level there uh, while they were setting up for heads-up play. But I don't think it'll be too much longer before we get to 200K, and then the blinds go up every 30 minutes. John flopped, flopped pretty well here. Middle pair, gut shot, back to a flush draw. Brian also flopped decently with bottom pair and a gut shot. Check, check. And, and it goes check, check. Wow, and Brian finds that miracle <laughs> turn eight. Definitely gonna put some chips in here on the turn. 250, that's 250. I think he's going to get raised again. Yep, he gets raised big here on the turn. Two hands in the row, he's thinking, what, what is he walking into? He could only win with a nine in the river. If he gets a ten for a straight, it'll be no good. He's losing to Brian's bigger straight. It's a huge raise, and he just... And you do want to be it. careful leading when the when Brian checks back, he's repping some sort of showdown value or an eight or a nine. So when that eight pairs up... Right, he effectively has bottom pair on the turn. It would have been a good spot for him to just check call. Yeah. So John put himself in this situation by leading the card. He really shouldn't be. I mean, what are you going to get value out of? Anything you beat is just going to fold. May maybe some ace high, but that's just, just it's too thin. I don't think I would lead um, a nine there if I was John. I'm leading a jack. And now Brian's, Brian's going to go check. big here on the river. I mean, that card's going to be a little scary for him as well. This is kind of the spot where he went the small sizing versus the other player, where GTL-wise he should have put him all in with the straight, but he went small because he knew he was more likely to get called. I think he's going to go around 2.5 million, 2.5 to 3 million. I don't, I, don't, I don't mind that. I, I, I don't want to see him go like 3 mil. I think that's He went 3.3. <sighs> Snap call. Snap call. Just didn't even think about it. Just like called him wow. up, beat him, beat him in the pot. Wow. For a full pot bet. Don't listen to me. And that's a that's a good example of, and I'm sure if we we're interviewing Brian right now, he might, you know, have some feelings. Just, you know, he can tell the guy's frustrated. The guy sometimes you're there and you could just tell like this guy's ready to call you off, and um, you take a bet sizing that you know, wouldn't normally take. I remember younger days of always have all these aspirations of partying after a big win and I used to do that but these days you just drain you just want to go home and pass out but you can't sleep because your brain is so wired you just have numbers and flops and chip counts like going through your head <laughs> wow oh Jesus. my god this is gonna be an action alti board. flopped trips for like the third time this head up heads up not only is he flopped trips it's against top pair <laughs> Run better, Brian. And like always, he's checking no. back his top pair, although this time is a good check back because you're only running into better when you get continued. Not to take anything away from Brian. He's playing very sick. Seeing him takes. I'm still thinking about that King Jack spot Brian took. Playing very epic. Now, this is Checks actually... twice, and now he's going to get check raised. He's going to get check raised now again. 
Brian's paying attention. That is a smart check because he knows he delays C bets. He delays C bets a bunch, and he's been checking back top pair a lot. So and he's been check raising so much, and he's been sort of John's been drawing lines in the sand and making very wide calls. He might be if he was check raised here, he might bet call a four based on you know some other hands we've seen. Yeah, but yeah. Really smart check by Brian. And he goes huge. He goes huge to 1.5. And he's going to get called based on what I'm looking at. I mean, you got to call with the king here. I don't care. It's a What's huge I mean? raise. It sucks having the 7 in your hand because Boards some of... 6-7, seven, 7-8. Seven, yep, 6-7, seven, 7-8. Seven, um, you know, 3-7 suited. Well, there's probably not going to do a 3-7. Oh, you never know. He's not going to have 3-7 offsuit. Don't there. raise, John. Okay. Yeah. And I, I, I like both of their plays here. I'm not I'm not going anywhere from and, John. And Brian's going to bet around $3 million in the river and get called. He's going to bet like $3.5 million and get snap called. I mean, Ja could have King Queen. I mean, he shouldn't have checked King Queen on the flop, but you never know. He's been checking some big ones. Well, now John's He's going to go somewhere in between three, three and a half, and he's going to get snapped. Now John's kicker doesn't play. Doesn't play. Three point one snap call. Wow, he goes over, bets the pot. Snap call. Wow. He just snap calls. He doesn't even think about it. He's realized he's getting snap called in all his value hands. He yeah. knows he's up against the yep. king. He says it doesn't matter. He might as well overbet the yep. pot. Brian's just going big when he has it and not bluffing when he doesn't and saving small pots to bluff in, and it's working out. If, if Brian doesn't have trips, you want him to have a bluff. And his most likely bluffs are going to be something like a straight draw. Or a flush is, draw. Yeah, straight draw, flush draw. So you don't want to have the cards in your hand that you want your opponent to have if he's bluffing, which is 7-8, uh, 8-9, eight, eight, or spades. So anytime you have any of those cards in your hand as the bluff catcher, you're blocking his bluffs. So it's just less likely he's bluffing it because you have the 7 in your hand. Doesn't mean you can never call with a block in your hand, but it should make the likelihood of you calling go down significantly. I think John is going to win this hand. So Christopher saying the seven is irrelevant when the queen comes. The so Christopher, you're referring to his kicker not playing. What what we're referring to is um, that you don't want to be blocking the other player's bluffs. Again, those of you wondering how we're interacting with the fans, we're on the World Poker Tour's Facebook page. The stream is up there, and in the comments section, you can chat, ask any questions you want to ask, state any comments, and we're checking it out. Just say hi if you want to say hi. Give you a shout out. Let us know what you want to talk about. Six high bluff here from John. Call. Call. Quick call with ace high. Brian makes a good call there with ace high. Mm -hmm. Sends the quick frustration. <laughs> We have potential for something to happen here. John on the button with ace eight, certainly going to come in for a raise. Brian just calls, which now means it's a possibility he might be uh, coming over the top of Brian's incoming raise here. Eight hundred. Snap all in. All, it's it's over. Wow. Aces to ace eight offsuit. This is going to be hard. Raise bet jam. Limp on the button. Raise from Brian out of the big blind. And snap jam from John wow. on the button. 
This is going to be very hard for Dortmund. This is one of the worst spots you can get in in the little hold. The running eights or running straight cards, or Brian is going to be the champion. He's refusing the handshake, doesn't want to jinx himself. <laughs> oh, he tried to shake his hand early. It's over. Yeah. Oh. There's that smile. I haven't seen Brian smile all day. He's been a machine. <laughs> Anton Wig, the rail. Give Brian a big hug. Jonathan Jaffe. Jonathan Jaffe just took down the high roller. 25k high roller the other day. Right, Brian won the showdown, but same difference. Congratulations to Brian Altman. Second WPT title, second WPT title here at the Hard Rock. Another half a million. Played great. What can you do? He's one of the crushers. Also, congratulations to John Dollinger. Played well all day, just wasn't his day heads up. John Racy really weighted everybody out. This was I'm sure a, he's happy with third place. This was a fun final table. It really was. A lot of interesting spots. Yeah. Some stuff that, you know, like uh, outside the box stuff. Some, uh, you know, yeah! extra yeah! good things. Pretty much wire to wire, to wire. He was up there in day, pretty much every day with the top of the chip counts. Well, I mean, what can you say? He's a crusher. The amount of focus on Brian's face just the entire day. Just like so in the zone. Made a lot of great plays. A couple spots here and there that didn't work out, but overall, some really awesome plays.